Hello, hello everyone. Welcome to Question Time. Um, it's your opportunity to quiz the candidates in this year's elections, have your say, and really, really just drill down into what is their manifestos and make sure that they're the right people that should be representing you next year um, from September. So first of all, we're going to start off with our activities and participation officer candidates. Vanessa's not happy about that. Um, <laughs> see us at them. Ah, I don't want to be up first. But um, yeah, so if the APO candidates would like to come up on stage, please. So is that, is that everyone, yeah? Okay. Okay, so the activities and participation officer is a role that, they're, they're, they're the ones who direct our societies, our sports teams, and ensure that they can prosper and give them the tools to be the best, best that they can be um, in terms of it can be elite sports, it can be ensuring that our manga, anime and manga society gets, I don't know, I don't know what the anime and manga society needs. <laughs> well, well, things like poor fitness, ensuring that they get um, the transport cost money that they need to go up to their studios in Clitheroe, things like that. So, we're going to start off with Abigail. So, Abigail, if you would like to deliver your manifesto, each candidate has two minutes for their manifesto, and that'll be followed up by a three minute session of questions from the audience, our open questions from the prepared one, and then the floor will be yours. So, you're on time. Hello? Can everyone hear me now? Hey. Um, so, my name's Abby. I'm going for APO because I love societies and stuff. I've joined so many that it's a bit ridiculous and don't have much time for anything else. Um, but I'm also looking at another university and seeing what they've done and want to bring some of their ideas to here to help improve it here as well. Uh, one of the things I want to do is sort out the funding so that every club gets an equal amount. Not so much equal, but equal to the proportion of a size. So the biggest clubs, if they've got stuff already, take into account what they've got and then fund the, what they don't so that people Money doesn't go to the ones that already have things, it goes to the ones that don't. Uh, another thing I want to do is look into the storage, because I know for my society, we have board games, they're currently in my bed. So if I'm not there, nobody's going to access them. So it's a better if somewhere in the evening, then the lock of all is a combination of marbles, so people can just see all the cameras and can go and open it and get the stuff. Um, also, I mean, a resource pack, because when I first set up the society, I had not a clue what uh, things could be got. Okay, and that's your two minutes. More or less bang on. So we're going to start off with the questions. I'm going to open it up with, you mentioned lockable storage there in your, in your speech. Uh, which groups are in need of this and where would you intend to place it within the student union? Years after we've done again, there's probably more, but I don't think we can all the societies. 
And we're going to open it up to the floor, so has anyone any questions, I guess? <laughs> that's, that's, that's the floor. Anyone? None of you have any questions at all? Oh, one of them too. What do you think of the strike system? Okay. Do you have any candidates or do you have a comeback on that? You've mentioned one particular strike, um, but what about the others? Do you not think that that's a positive thing for the societies? Some of them are, yeah, I do agree. But again, it seems to be that people trust that when you say you do it. Oh, sorry. I think people just trust when you say, say you do events, people should just trust you do events. You shouldn't have to have a strike saying you do. It, it just seems to me that it's making it more complicated than it needs to be. And the back, back left corner. Uh, yes, uh, what would you put instead of strike? So, would you keep some of the strikes that you've got at the moment, or how would you rec uh, give recognition to sides that have done well? I don't think society awards because we're doing it. Well, I think some of the strikes should be kept, but I think it should be that all the societies that are currently active or unresponsible should be able to get rid of because I know that quite a few people said they're going to do the right strike. There seem to be certain ones that people don't like, they want to keep it, encourage discrimination rather than encourage the things that are in societies. And uh, you mentioned giving out uh, funding distribution towards societies who don't have any money at the moment. Um, what do you think of the current system that's already in place? I think it's, so I've, I've had problems with it. Um, not so much just getting the money, but also the fact that you don't get replies saying why you can't have the money if you're not getting it. But I think it should be like doing like I don't know, like a spreadsheet with all the things that the society currently have and all the clubs currently have, and then work out what people need from that rather than just people, people saying, "Oh, we need this," and they might not need it. Whereas that money would go to the society that really does need it or clubs that really don't need it. Okay, we're gonna one last question. So which societies need funding and which societies don't need funding? I don't know what societies have at the moment. That would be something that would need to be looked into. But I do know at the moment most of the funding, I know a lot of societies that complain about it. Like from my friends who are in other societies. What societies are they? I know, well, mine obviously. I know that drama's had some problems with it. Um, I'm just trying to remember some of my friends who are I don't know, yeah, it seems to be that a lot of people are saying that society don't get much of what they and that's not the problem. Okay, um, round of applause for Abby, everyone. Thank you. <laughs> okay, we're going to move on to Arvin. It's, I'm going to try and get your, your name right, you said you showed him earlier. This is Shaw. Perfect, thank you very much. <laughs> pretty, pretty much there. Um, it's like, once again, you've got two minutes. Um, are you okay with the microphone though? Do you want to move in the closer? Or can you guys hear me? Yeah. Well, once you start, we'll uh, start the timer. Afternoon, everyone. Um, my name is Arvind Bissett, sir. I'm a third year law with Japanese student and also a co-founder and current committee member of the Japanese Society. The keystone of my campaign to, is to enforce the core values of the SU. I believe the SU has been great in the organization in providing um, fun and proactive opportunities for students and with, a, with an all-embracing nature. Ultimately, students of any year, from any background can join and just take part. However, the issues of communication and accountability 
of the societies and sports teams seems to hinder the SU from being exceptional, in my opinion. Thus, I am determined to implement measures to hold all societies and sports teams to a higher standard of care and fulfillment for the students, with provisions that are both rewarding and punitive in nature. The issue of communication, I believe, is resolved with, this, with uh, actively uh, encouraging participation of the students. Thus, I'm adamant to implement measures that involve a structure of smaller subcommittees led by the students themselves, but ultimately overseen by the SE. In addition, I would like to implement a bi-monthly forum where students can voice their concerns and queries and opinions to improve their own society sports team and ultimately the SE on a whole. I believe with these changes, we will have a stronger, more prominent SE that will benefit students in the future. Thank you for listening, and I look forward to your vote. Thank you, Arvin. Um, your first opening question, I guess, is how do you intend to make student groups more welcoming to international students? First of all, um, one of the things that I would like to do is to try and make society, well, to make the societies and sports teams uh, have the opportunity to partake in more equity orientated um, events. These events don't have to be things like freshers or new freshers. These can be events such as parties, barbecues, or even more like charitable events. In the need of uh, trying to get more students, international students, into society and sports teams, I think the strike system does have to go, ultimately. I think it's a terrible, terrible system. If anyone has any further questions on that, I would like to answer them. Does anyone have any comebacks on that? Um, yeah. um, you mentioned about the subcommittees. Who would be in that committee and what is the role of that? Ultimately, in these subcommittees, um, elected individuals from every society uh, would be a part of it. The committees themselves would be uh, grouped between the societies, so societies that have a political agenda, Societies that have are uh, more culturally orientated, the societies that are uh, more faith orientated, as well as a committee for the sports teams. Within these subcommittees will be representat representatives of the individual societies and sports teams to come together to talk and to ultimately discuss what issues have arisen for their own society. Through that, they can come to the SME and we can have this organized structure where communication will be more, will flow a lot better. Thus, improving the SU and improving the society of the sports You highlighted the Japanese society. What other experience do you have liaising with students? Well, in my first and second year of university, I was the Japanese course representative. So I've liaised with students in an academic, uh, in academic scenario. However, uh, last year, on my year abroad in Japan, I was actually part of the uh, student union at my host university. I was a committee member and I was the exchange student officer. That meant my roles were to uh, look after the exchange students, make sure their activities, events that benefited them, made them feel welcome in Japan as well as the host university, and ultimately try and create a surrounding scenario that um, really just benefited native Japanese students, exchange students, and just benefited the university. I hope to bring those roles and experiences to the SU here. On top of that, I've done various volunteering opportunities and various volunteering roles as well. So it's with that in mind that I think I will actually enjoy being an officer. Okay, um, go to Matt at the back. So what will you change about the stripe system and why don't you like it? Well, first of all, if we can actually go through the stripes, stripe by stripe. Uh, the development strike. Ultimately, it just seems like a very arbitrary strike that's just there to be rewarded for someone who runs a society. I mean, one of the criteria is creating a new and innovative event or activity. From my experience, is it that what every society pretty much is trying to do to try and create these events and activities that benefit the SU and benefit their own students? If we go through the other strikes, then the inclusion strike, which I take personally. I feel that it encourages positive discrimination. Why should there be a criteria that says providing evidence of successful attempts to include minority groups? I'm half black, half Indian. Do I fill a quota in that instance? Finally, the community strike. It has, I, the essence of the community strike is 
quite good, I believe. Um, but one of the criteria in it is to provide evidence of encouraging members to be involved in RAG. Now, I'd like to put a question actually towards my other candidate. Has RAG been existent this year? That's what I thought. So, please correct me. Actually, I wouldn't correct me. Um, I'll start by saying that RAG has actually been boosted quite a lot by Limax. Um, uh, raising charity for um, Pat Millen, um, a, which is pretty good. There's also been um, it's been collaborative with, collaborative with um, campaigns Oscar, so when it has included it in other stuff that's been going on. So there's like, like Shaggy, the uh, the money raised from that went through the bag. I think they'll talk through the rest of the money. Uh, do you want to get a response from? Please. Yeah, Gary. <laughs> Um, so, just to go on, on the point of has like been existed this year, like has been existed, it may not have been out there, but uh, students who actually take part in any charitable activity on campus through the SU automatically go through the bank total. So, I ran an event which were for Macmillan Cancer and I raised 1500 quid. That is going to be added uh, from Polka Society, they donated 300 quid towards that. So, that is our student engagement and that will go through the bank total. So, to answer that question, it has been available. To come back to your point, you did say that just now, that even though RAG has been insistent, it hasn't been pushed, like it hasn't been prominent in itself. Do you not feel that's a problem? I'm sorry to be asking the questions to Eva, but do you not feel that if RAG was more prominent, if it would stay in as an actual prominent thing, as an important thing, held in its importance, do you not feel that would be a lot better? So? Yeah, well, one last response and then, yeah? Okay, yeah, but, well, we'll, we'll have to call it there anyway because we're over the allotted time for questions. Um, everyone, Arvin. <laughs> so next up, we'll move on to Josie, Josie Linsell. Um, once again, you have two minutes. Okay. So my name's Josie Linsell, I'm going to APO, obviously. Um, I'm running a team at the West, you've probably seen us around a bit. Um, I've been involved in the sports club for four years, and the whole time I've been here. Um, two years of those, I ran the club, and last year we won the club of the year, so we've done pretty well. Um, I also work in the team for office, so I see the sports teams like day by day, sort out their problems and stuff like that, find out what they've done well as well, so I can promote that stuff to other clubs. Um, the stuff that I want to, my manifesto is out there, so I'd rather actually respond to things that have been said already. Um, so with the storage thing, there's actually a storage room out there which is half empty, um, which could be used if you are not the lock on it, the lock is into the lock is secure, so that could even be used. Um, otherwise, I made a manifesto, um, and it said that the sports clubs as well, which would be fine, except obviously it's got to be in the union, in the union hours. Actually, a lot of the stuff that goes on is outside the union hours. Like the club site is in here quite locked in until quite late, and the sports teams operate outside of the union quite late, so it doesn't actually work. Um, but the people who do want to use these seven hours, there is like a big one there that will work. Um, Strikes have been raised, obviously. Um, with the community strike, obviously that is really good. And if you're going to, there are a lot of clubs and societies that do raise them to charity, and like a, usually Islam society, Islamic society, they, 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 they raise a lot of money. Usually it's like a thousand pounds a year, which is amazing. More than that, perfect. That can easily go into RAC. So people complaining about the community strike and complaining about RAC, they're feeding to each other. So why not use both? Instead of putting both out and saying that's shit but that won't work. Well what's the point in that? Um, that's that's one thing. Um, you're saying that we don't need the strikes because that's what societies do. Well actually some societies don't and I think we should be rewarded when societies do do the things. Um, Cut you off, sorry. We have to cut you off there, that's your two minutes. Um, so I'll start you off with the questions. Um, well, should we give everyone a round of applause beforehand? <laughs> okay, um, your manifesto mentions that you're recruiting volunteers to raise team performance um, to elite levels. How would you go about doing this, um, training them to an appropriate level and keeping them on board for the full year? 
Um, well, yeah, I want to recruit the students that we have. We have some really good sports uh, courses at this university. There's no reason why we shouldn't use those students that have um, they have the academic experience, maybe not actually in school. So for them to be able to come away with our sports team and bring them up to level would be beneficial to both. So they get experience in the sports team and benefit from that. Um, training, most teams have really good coaches at the moment anyway. So if they were to work with the coaches, there's no reason why they couldn't continue to work with coaches are doing or work alongside. They don't have to be coaches individually. Um, I would hope that most of them would be final year students so they wouldn't have the training that they needed to perform on the sports. It's their like, the end of the day, they've got a degree and shouldn't be able to do that if they're going to graduate. Um, to keep them for the full year, what I want to do is get a journalist, a physio, a coach, anything that we can get, a sports psychologist um, per team so that they get they actually build up a relationship with that team and they're there every week so they know the people and they know the problems rather than just getting anyone floating around. And I think that relationship would keep them for the full year. Okay, um, we'll go to Emily first and then... Um, so I've read your manifesto and you aim to implement a new system um, for the society's funding, very similar to the um, club mark that you do for sport. Um, how is that going to help a society, say the board game society, how, how is that going to work for them? Well, Abigail said that she's... How is Abigail like? Okay. Abby has said that they're struggling with um, the funding. So rather than there being a pot that people simply think, can we use it for that? Can we have it for this? And we go, no. And they don't get a response until they say, well, can we use it for this? And it's like, no, you know, okay then. So what I want to do is actually split that pot up so that it's sort of promised or in the separate accounts of each society. So that then when they say, we've done our annual plan, we want to do this in the year, then they would be able to say, well, we'll use it for that. And actually, this will benefit us. And we've got hundred pounds, which is ours, and we'll use it for this and that. Rather than sort of thinking we've got no money, so we can't plan anything, and when you try and get something, you're not allowed it because you're not sure what it's for. That would be yours, and it would be awarded on the basis of what you said you were going to do that year. So then you would be able to develop as you were that year. And no doubt, if you be able to do the events because of the money, you're going to actually recruit more members as well, which seems to be a problem for us as well. Okay. Do you want to come back on that? It's actually a really good idea. Is, but on the local storage, I do agree that a lot of people are out, out of hours and stuff. But you can have some COVID societies when they're locked in and you can still get downstairs. Mm -hmm. And I do agree with that space downstairs because we actually have been using that sort of semi on and off, but it's not, it's one big room to get in there. So different societies couldn't, I know no one's going to nick it anything, but you know what I mean? It, I think they should have like their own little bit of storage, even if it's just like a metal case that's big enough to put their stuff in. On the rest of the sports societies, I wasn't actually thinking about putting it in the union, because I do understand a lot of them aren't in the union. I was more thinking about seeing them about putting that in the company sports centre and thinking about doing it in there, because then it's accessible easily to most of the societies. But for example, in your speech, most of it's been about sport. I know you probably very into sport, but. Sport only came up when I got the yeah, to, to be fair, but it, it is a case of what are you going to do to help the society because it's so apparently you do seem to struggle more than it would because it does more of a sports than sports than society. What I did say was, I'm not going to be like recite my manifesto because I'm reading my manifesto was like two points, sports could be better than Because I understand that I do agree there. The only thing I would do is I'm going to do with sports is to actually bring them up to excellence because I agree with them too well. But what we need to do is go from the site because they need to do it. Okay, so we're running, running last question now. Um, it was to do with the idea of you've got a lot of experience in terms of sports with all the team you've handed off. Um, I was just wondering what the experience in the London site is because you're supposed to be helping both. Good question. Um, I work in the team of the so yeah, that's a sport, but I'm also around the issue a lot, um, which means I'm inside and out of the opportunities quite a lot, so I've heard more because I've been working there a lot more about what's going on with certain societies and the problems they've had and also the success they've had and how um, how that's worked for them and what I think we need to like you know to transfer that to other other society problems. Um, I've also joined Paul Society this year, which is brilliant. Um, so they're new and they've had trouble setting up, they've had endless trouble setting up and running. Um, so I've seen the troubles they've gone through. And I've been in a position 
in the court office to be able to help us across the flight transport and the finance runs the same. So I've actually helped quite a lot with that. And I don't see seeing as a transport and the booking and uh, finances and awards should be or are the same. I don't see how there's such a difference in money. I know all that sort of stuff already. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, Josie Lento. Next up, we have Vanessa Silva. Um, can I ask that? Do you want to make sure that the microphone's nice and close to you? Um, because I think the people at the back might be struggling to hear at occasions. Mm -hmm. Hiya. Uh, my name is Vanessa. Uh, I've been involved in the SU for various uh, years, about four. Uh, the society I chaired for two years won Most Active Society last year. And I'm currently working in the SU as both the society's assistant and in the Opportunity Centre. I'm also the deputy editor for the Society's page in Pluto, and I'm on the committee for the Society's Ball, as well as um, creating an art treating for next year. So if any of you are interested, let me know. <laughs> um, the in underlying theme of all my aims is community, cooperation, and union. Um, I want people to walk in and know that if they have disabilities or speak another language, they can still practice sports and attend societies, and that someone will be there to help them through it. Uh, it's knowing that there are events that you can join in with your children and that there are opportunities to strengthen your employability and learn new skills and see your religious views and any issues being fairly represented on council. I want to help society, sports and volunteers work together to re-establish RAG and get the support, encouragement and promotion they need to fundraise for those who truly need it. I want to be the kind of APO whose societies and sports clubs know they can trust and will go around to visit them at least once, and someone who will listen to their feedback and act on it. Uh, for example, if you want your app, I plan to, if you apply for an, uh, a grant, I will reply within three weeks. I can promise you that. I want to talk, if you want to talk about random stuff or if you want to know what I've been up to that week in terms of my aims, come in, my door will be open. This year's societies have had a massive boost in participation, and I mean massive. We, are, we hit 1,357 people in societies, so we actually have more than sports teams right now. And I, I'm really proud to have been involved in that. At the end of the day, this position pays thousands of pounds and you have one year to do it. For me, this isn't something just to do after my degree. The issue deserves better than that. I'm standing here because I want to be the kind of person who does it here. I love what I do, I have the passion and I have the skills and I have the vision to boost the sense of community within this SU. So please vote for me. So Vanessa, Vanessa, within your manifesto you refer to reps who work with the APO. What do you mean by this? We have societies that have uh, particular interests, like there are societies that are political, there are ones that are green issues, ones that are international, kind of thing. So basically they would have one rep who would be in constant contact with all of them, and especially in the case of they want to collaborate with each other, they would be there to give the promotion, to give the support, if they want to liaison with any other um, department in the university, sorry, they would be there uh, to help them with, uh, with that and they would meet regularly with the APO as well. So if they're not doing their job, I would be able to see it. And then I, would, I could also go to society and ask, okay, have this, has this rep been helping you in any way? Uh, Locked up to floor. Hi. Full of questions today. Hi, Emily. <laughs> um, how are you going to help someone who is in a wheelchair, let's say, um, someone who has a disability, participate um, in the Pulse Society, which is my society. Okay, there would be some, for example, there, there would be some societies that would obviously not be adaptable, as far as I know. But it is something that we can work on. Every society is adaptable in one way or another. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, do you want to on that? Um, so, you say a societal society isn't adaptable um, and therefore that person can't um, okay. participate in my society. How are you going to help me explain that to that person? Because okay. I don't want to do that. 
um, that w if there is a way to adapt it, I would I would go for it. We will try it. But if not, then that would be my responsibility to do it, and I would try to explain every single that we exhausted every single option to tell them. Okay, uh, we've got a question that will come to the front. Hi Simon. Hi Bessa. Uh, quick question, what's your opinion on the stripes? Would you keep them, would you get rid of them? There are some, that's the thing, there are some that do serve a good purpose and I have, I have friends in other universities who have stripes and they work quite well. Um, there is the one, you know, like they said about the positive discrimination, so that would have to be changed or abolished altogether. But the, you would have to listen to the student body and get feedback on it and see exactly what societies want because that is part of the job, is listening to what you want and then I would act on it. So, but my personal opinion is that it doesn't, not, it doesn't always work because we do have society awards and being on the society's board committee, we are actually putting in more awards than the union board has. So there, are, there will be more specific awards for certain things that the strikes do. Okay, welcome to the front. Um, you said before about introducing representatives to bridge the communication between APO and societies. Um, what else have you got in mind to make your role more accountable and more transparent in what you're doing for us? Uh, yeah, uh, like I said in, in my speech, I would have like an open door policy. I'm calling it like society happy hour um, and you know, sports pit teams as well. So basically I would be around and if you have any issues you could come talk to me. And then that's what the representatives would be for as well. They would, they would be in contact with me, and I would be in constant contact with them. Um, I'm sorry, could you repeat the last question? Sorry. That's not all right. Um, what else would you do to make your role like more transparent and so that you're more held to account for? So you're just making it more clear what, what you're doing. So, see, if I were, I've, I've been in the SU for a long time. I would love to, like, at the end of the week, actually know what the APO or whatever whatever member of the SEC had done that that week. So I would keep a record of every, like, every action, every meeting. If I have to, I'll keep a record of it. And then at the end of the week, or at any day of the week, you tell me, okay, what have you done this week or in the past two months? You know, that go towards the points that you said. I would be like, okay, I've done this, 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 this. Okay, I'm gonna have to call it there for time. Um, everyone. Okay. <laughs> Okay, and finally, off the canvas I hear, but uh, very not least, Tanya Morris. TJ, TJ. <laughs> <laughs> right, so, hi guys, I'm TJ, or Peach, as some of you know me. Um, I've been in Dunnex Society for three years now, I've been secretary for two, and I've just joined poll, and last year I volunteered events. Um, so, why should you vote for me? Um, well, I want to work with sports and societies to maximise funding, not just within the uni but outside funding as well to get outside support. I also want to build inter-society relationships because we started in Berlin and we're doing a few events with other societies now and we've done a few events now. But I want to get societies out there because there are so many and there's so many within the union that people don't know what societies are about. Um, and there are some that have been affiliated now, like Quidditch and <laughs> So let's see, I want to do that a big mass event where societies can just get together, get to know each other and get it out there. I also want to help with organisation and promotion of events. Um, because promotion is a big thing, not only for societies themselves, but for their events that they put on. Um, so I want to work with Rumble Kings, which is obviously hard to try and find a room suitable for some societies to put on their events. Um, and I want to work, as Vanessa already pointed out, about getting regs back out there to everybody and not just leaving it within the society. Because I know that there are students amongst us that are interested in fundraising but didn't know that, that RAG was there for it, so it's just getting it back out there and getting everybody back involved. And that's it really. Thanks. Yes, gentlemen.
Um, okay, so you mentioned there building into society relationships. Just how do you intend to do this? Well, as I said, I want to put on like big mass events because um, I know anime and manga are a big ones for doing the into society stuff. Um, but I don't think it should be down to society to do. I think it should be for your ACO to get out there and say, you know, come on guys, let's get together. And um, so it's helping. And if they have got an idea, then they can bring it to me and I'll help push it out there and get it out. Okay, and to the floor, questions? Go on, Em. We'll go to the back first. <laughs> uh, societies and activities are overwhelmingly Preston based. Uh, what are you going to do to involve and inform uh, Bur Burnley campus students? Well, this is the thing. I'm going over to Burnley on Monday. I'll be at Burnley on Monday to go and put myself out there so people know who I am. Um, but I also think that somebody needs, a, 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 like a British needs to be there as well. So I'm looking maybe into looking to get a rep from Burnley so we can interconnect those. Um, or we'll see, taking some societies over there or some sports and getting like maybe a Burnley team together so they can come and participate with us here at Preston. Okay. Um, any other questions? You'd all be lost without me. Um, so, what problems do sports teams have and how are you going to solve them? The main one from, from talking to sports teams is, well, from talking to teams are funding issues and money because they want equipment and stuff. So, I'm looking to, to stretching out their funding issues, getting them involved with people outside there in like, local businesses and push their funding issues that way. Okay, and uh, this question on the sofa there. You mentioned a minute ago that um, if a person had disabilities, you can adapt no matter what. I'm wondering, say, a person in a wheelchair wants to join the Pole Fitness Society, how would you adapt that? Right. Pole Fitness isn't just about lower body strength, it's about upper body strength. If you're in a wheelchair, obviously it is adaptable because it is mainly upper body strength having taken part in pole myself, I understand. And I know that it is upper body strength, so they're obviously going to have strong upper body strength to be able to push themselves around in a wheelchair. So in that sense, it is adaptable in that way. Um, and plus, the, the movements in pole ain't exactly that. But, you know, you're not running around a pole and trying to lift yourself up. You're literally just walking around. It's not a... Okay. Um... Any other questions from the floor? You mentioned before about uh, room bookings for societies. Um, that obviously is an evident problem for a lot of societies and the last APO thought about putting up a clear room booking system which obviously like didn't happen. What would you do to make societies, what would make it easy for societies to book out rooms and stuff in student union? Obviously that's something that needs to go through the op centre because that's very safe and run bookings themselves because the problem is, is this is open to the whole union. Uh, it's not open to just the union, it's open to the uni as well. So if they, I, I mean that, that's a problem myself with Spellis and trying to find a room for us to rehearse in because we're not allowed in places like the media factory because we're not media students. So it's we're trying to find a way that I can encompass an overall sort of timetable and system. I'll, I'm happy to sit and work with the staff to work around obviously when they need the room and when we need the room and try and put the best fit of all in. Okay, and that's the last question because we're on time to everyone. TJ. Okay, so we do have two candidates who couldn't make it today and given their apologies, I'll start off by reading Nadine White's manifesto. Um, Nadine, I want this role because as a Burnley campus student, I know that we don't have as many activities available to us. Also, Burnley campus students don't attempt to interact much with Preston, any kind of activities, social groups or events, and this is something that I am hoping to change. I want to encourage Preston and Burnley to interact with each other. I have worked in several different industries over the past few years. The past and more, most influential jobs I have had have provided me with experience in a, in a diverse community where I've dealt with various testing personalities, highly intense situations, and this enabled me to improve my conflict resolution skills. As a university student, I am already prepared to meet deadlines, organize my time efficiently, and allocate funds and resources efficiently. In addition, I am able to research like a professional and care like a friend, whilst knowing the boundaries in between. Her top three priorities are to bring students, the students together on a regular basis, to activate 
participation within social activities and to encourage more activities in Burnley as requested by students. So that is Nadine White, who is a Burnley student running for the position of APO. And next I have a manifesto from Tina Schwind, who unfortunately can't be here, she's out of the country. Her, hers is a bit, um, starts a bit funny, so uh, mind me. UConn students, do you even vote? I think that's how it's meant to be. <laughs> <laughs> Voting in general is very important. It shows that you can embrace democracy and want to make your voice heard. By voting, you can choose the person who is going to be representing you all next year. So it is crucial to get involved. Voting for me is important because I will do my very best to improve your university experience by taking care of sports, societies and RAG. I've been involved in the union since I came to UQAM and I am part of societies, very, support, very supportive and have volunteered for RAG. I graduated last year and I'm currently doing my postgraduate degree. Plus, I am also an international student, so I'm sure that many of you guys can identify yourself with me. I would, would love to be able to represent you. And that is Tina Schwind, so we're in a position of APO. Okay, so we're going to ask two final questions to all candidates um, in a kind of debate system. So. Whoever wants to jump in first, just jump in and yeah, fight over a microphone if need be. So first up um, is from Sam Bloomfield, current APO. <laughs> Candidates have talked a lot in their manifestos about making things equal between sports and societies, even though they have, even though they have equal access to grant pot money and have specific staff support. What do you actually plan to implement to improve life for societies? It's what it ends with. What do you actually plan to implement to improve life for societies? Okay. Uh, like I did put in my manifesto. Make sure you cross that. Oh, um, uh, <laughs> like I did put in my manifesto, um, I would want the reps, and the reps would get a lot of. Uh, it will get more people involved. Um, and as I write for Kudo as well, uh, the society's page has actually been getting really good feedback. So it's getting the word out there about society, and then that will get more people to come and because they'll see, okay, this is actually quite cool. Um, another one of my points is to expand the Liberty Hall to get um, volunteers who can BSL or um, who speak uh, native language um, to come with you know, international students and students with disabilities to attend um, societies, events, so instantly we would get more people, you know, we reach a whole group of people that we've never put before, because I know it's like certain deaf students, they don't like to come and see people have, have someone to come to them, or they feel uncomfortable in that situation, um, so instantly we would get you know, more people. One thing I want to do is, fresh is fair, it's, it's a bit of a mess really, no offence, but at the moment, the way it is, you go into the 53, go around all the forces, so, and then go straight out to us. Most people do skip fear to where the societies are. Now, when I was, I was down at Leicester in the previous year, I got that after the first year, but there you go. Um, there, they have a massive fresh is fair, where societies and schools and schools and anyone who runs any sort of group, all the clubs in the same space mix up so that if you're walking past you might walk past the hockey crew, the crew, the generalised the girl like crew and then like like football and everything. It, it just means that sometimes you don't know what you want until you see it. I mean when I was down there I ended up joining the side sizes that I could never bother to join. But just because it looked interesting. So that would increase the number of people who vote. Now there's a lot of people who don't go to are we talking about freshers or sports oh, fair? Oh. Fresh, freshers fair had 6,000 students through. Sports, so we're so on about sports fair, yeah. Okay. Um, I know that sports and science is separate. Someone, I can't remember who, who it was, 
Someone from society told me this week that um, it used to be mixed and that they hated it because they couldn't talk and there were people around and it was just sort of, it needed to be separate and they preferred it to be separate and that's why it was separated. This year it was, it was there as a sports fair and society fair. So it was actually, it was um, advertised as society as well. Maybe we need to work on football. Maybe year two we'll get some football. I'm not sure. Maybe we should have tried better. But I don't think putting them together would make a difference. We would be split if the party side and decided to buy them separate. Okay, well, should we bring it back onto the topic? Uh, what are you going to do to ensure that they're, they're equal, sides as sports are equal? Okay, are they in the DJ, go ahead. Um, I want to work with Give It A Go because Give It A Go is a, a big thing that actually got us. Us, well, got me to join my society, but it, it's not it's not promoted out enough. So what I want to do is I want to make sure that they give it a good brochure, ready to go out freshers, and then promoted all the way through. So the events are promoted out weeks in advance, so people know that there are events coming up. Um, and uh, I know it's going to go back off topic, but I have to agree with Josie. Having been in a society and having been with it mixed, it didn't work. Um, because the, the sport teams are loud, and we're not loud. We're we're quiet. Um, so it was able to get a scene being in here this year, um, and that's actually really helped us with our attention. Um, ah, sorry. Um, being last year, I obviously didn't know this because I've only seen it from the way it was last year. So, and this year, and the fact that it's quite dead, there were a lot of big people at the site that have asked for that, but then it needs to be more advertising. E oh, sorry. Um, even if it's a case of having the door into source blocked just for that, so that people have to come through here. Oh, I'm not very good with that, but that's all. Anyway. Um, but just making people come for a year, so at the moment, it goes a lot of people do drop out and to be uh, in society because they don't get the advertising. Okay, we'll get to it. Ultimately, I don't want to change the dynamic in between sports teams and in the individual societies. I think that would be unfair. But in order to make, the, to make a balance, so to, speak, to actually improve the overall society. So that's where um, this duty of care and fulfillment comes in. As I've mentioned in my manifesto, as I've mentioned today, by doing that, hopefully it will elevate the sports teams and societies to be fair and to act on even ground. Okay, and that's it for questions. Ladies and gentlemen, your APR candidates. Okay, we can have a quick five minute interval because my legs are aching from standing here. Yeah, so um, yes, five minutes, we'll come back and we'll be able to quiz the presidential candidates. Okay, guys, um, welcome on stage the presidential candidates, Hayley White and Lee Mack. Okay, so these two candidates are running for presidency. Um, ben Latham's our current president, and they're the figurehead of the, the students' union almost. And sit on some of the highest boards, especially within the university. Um, we're going to start off this with Lee Mack. Okay. Remember to talk in nice and quiet voice. <laughs> hey everyone. Um, so I'm Lee Mack, and I'm running for president. Um, I'm also doing it for his team, SOS, um, supporting our students. Okay, um, we need liberation, equality and freedom. That's why I'm running. I want to bring it back to the students and give them, give them the opportunity to, to be heard. Student students are the most important feedback tool used to shape the university and its policies. I've always been student focused since my time being at the university. I've worked at Source Boy for three years, Flying Store and the Precious Team. Not to mention, I've also been elected as uh, the union's campaign officer last year. I've achieved so much for the student body from representing their views with an appeal to providing an aid for students to have a recognisable voice on campus. I want to take this further. I want to make the, I want to make the university understand that students are partners in the university and not customers. It's all about students and not me. After all, the issue is here to make, make life better for students. My main three priorities are on campus with the ensuing um, to work in hand with the university with Andy Union to stop the cutting of student opportunities. Currently, the government is proposing to cut £37 million, pounds, which equates to youth on uh, missing out on around £6 million on forced student engagement. Without having the opportunity to better myself, I don't know where I'd be. 
But growing up through the system of care homes and foster care has proven that student opportunities is a need on uh, all universities and has to be around. For students from more disadvantaged backgrounds, uh, not for students from disadvantaged backgrounds, but for everyone, it's a beneficial factor for the student body. I want to create a better future for internationally mature and placed in students. Having had the experience of taking the year out of education, with no support facilities in place um, to help students get back into education, I've learnt the hard way and students, have to, students shouldn't have to go through the trouble which I did. I plan to work alongside the university to make, this, make sure this changes, that schools offer support and guidance about being a student again, about funding issues, childcare commitments and funding management. Not only that, but to ensure that all international students receive the same treatment and facilities as former students do. Like okay, that's two there. minutes. I'm sorry, Lee. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Lee, Lee, your opening question is, in your manifesto you refer to £37 million cuts in government funding and working with the university to ensure minimal cuts happen. How do you intend to go about doing this? Um, so obviously it's government, government funding cuts which are going to be in place. Um, there are a lot of funding opportunities for um, detention, uh, keeping detention figures up from the university. The university don't publicise how, how much they have to spend. But there are funding opportunities from like the youth council, the youth funding, uh, the youth funding body, um, and the arts council at the same time. Um, students from disadvantaged backgrounds do have packages in place um, from the social services, the care workers, everything like that, which all roll into one. Uh, working with the university in hand to ensure stuff like this gets brought into place um, for students, say from disadvantaged backgrounds, and that effect and that the effect on uh, the cuts don't affect stuff like the student union and student engagement going out there and actually doing stuff for students like the freshers for it or what source puts on at survival at the end of the year because things like that will be getting cut as well as sports society budgets and the union's whole budget will apply. Okay questions from the floor? Yeah. From? One of the biggest uh, priorities for the NUS Women's Campaign this year has been carer students. Um, uh, well, what are you going to make sure, uh, what are you going to do to make sure and raise awareness about the problems that carer students face? Because if a carer signs on to be a student, they don't receive any government help, they don't receive a carer's allowance or anything. So I'm just wondering, like, what, what are your plans on that? What do you think about stuff like that? Yeah, speaking from experience, like I said, growing up in, in foster homes and children's care, uh, ch foster homes and children's care, foster care and children's homes, third time okay. Um, basically, um, any, uh, NUS, I've been working alongside them, I've provided, I'm a case study for them at the same time. Um, working with NUS on the actual topic itself, more, the word awareness doesn't have to be out there, it uh, doesn't have to be used, it's actually getting out there and saying to people, this is what's available to you, because it's, it's not making it work, it's actually saying, we have these facilities for you. Currently, I'm working with the welfare um, department of the university to introduce some kind of package like that and work along the social, work, uh, social services department at LCC to actually implement changes such as getting people from, people from disadvantaged backgrounds up into education. Because currently, I'm still a government stati statistic. I should actually be here. I should be somewhere in prison or on the door. And I'm, I'm here now. I've represented 32,000 students. I graduate in July, and then that's when I won't be a government statistic, and that's all, that's how other people should be at the same time. Okay, then. second question. We've got to. Thanks for it again. You're always working. Um, my question is: This year, we've seen some drastic changes coming from the university, such as the safety bus cuts. Um, financial cuts, support cuts, um, affecting the union. How are you going to, because obviously there's going to be more changes coming in next year, it's going to be even tougher than what the SAP team have actually um, achieved this year. Um, how are you going to stop that from affecting us um, and make it as, what is it, as low impact as possible? There we go. So again, it'd be working in hand with the university. I, I know that uh, Ben, the current president at the moment, is setting a, trying to set a three-year plan for the university to implement funding opportunities. Um, again, it's proving to the university. The university needs to know and 
the university needs to be known and shown what is actually happening with, student, uh, with students that are on campus. The cuts, for example, which are happening, the psychology department is actually facing a lot of lecturers, uh, and these are good lecturers. Um, so what's happening now is that the university have got all this money, but they can still do the university grounds up or anything like that, but yet yeah, leave lecturers out. They went about paying them on an hourly wage, so that contact time for a student. I'll be one to stand there and set at the university that this isn't happening because students, again, you're not a customer, you are, you are you're in partnership with this university. Okay, we're going to have to wrap it up there then with Lee's questions. So that's Lee Mack, everyone. And next up we have Hayley White. Um, hi. So two years ago, I was sat here campaigning and telling people why they should vote for me for council chair. Two years later, I've been elected council chair and NUS delegate twice. I am running for president of the SU. I can honestly say that representing the students at UCANSU has been one of the best things I have ever done. I am so passionate about the work and the opportunities that this student union has for students. Over the last two years, not only have I been elected as a council chair, I have been a member of Freshers Team, volunteered within RAGS and Green Letter Project, been a committee member of Pro Society, been on a sports team and have regularly helped out in union campaigns. You may also have seen me pouring a pint or two in sauce. So what makes me the best candidate for the job? Well, with the experience I have gained from the last two years, I understand what it takes to make a good president and the way that the union works. I have the confidence and the right persona to deal with situations and negotiate with the senior management team of the university when needed. I am approachable, determined, dedicated and genuine. I always make time for students and go that extra mile. It's what I've done for the last two years. I'm not here to provide you with unrealistic and unachievable promises. But the only thing I can promise of you is that I will put 100% into any task that is thrown at me and always fight for the best outcomes for the entire student population at UCAN. If elected as president, I will focus on the general elections, including the strategy and information available for all students. I will be working on the way that the union is reforming the way in which officers and staff represent and engage with students, making UCAN and SU a more accessible union for all students. I will also tackle current issues on campus from a wider and more diverse range of students, support student-led events and campaigns, particularly when it comes to society, sports clubs and union volunteers, because at the end of the day, the SU is not about dictating, it's about supporting you, the students of UCAN. And my last point is to ensure students are not kept in the dark over situations that affect them. This year we have seen situations where we have a lot, lack of transparency and communication from both the union and the university, and I think that this really needs to improve. You are the students, you are paying the money, and you are the ones that we deserve. I'm going to have to cut you off there, I'm sorry. <laughs> Towards the end there, you mentioned that students should not be kept in the dark, or the situations that affect them. What would be your first steps as president to combating this in the future? Yeah, so, um, like basically, we need to go out there and speak to more students. Uh, this is something I've done this year, and yes, there are a lot of students on this campus, there are a lot of students on Burnley campus, Maya Scout, and let's not forget the, the part of Hartley Colleges, but I think it's really important that we need to take that even further. So we need to really get out there, we need to make things more accessible for students, we need to basically be putting up stuff and, and making people aware. For example, recently we've done some posters um, from council that will show you guys, um, the rest of the students, where you can go if you have a problem and you want to um, a voice your opinion and I think that's we just take it from there really. Okay, um, and if we like to take the floor, so Emily first. The population um, who at the moment are just very apathetic and don't really care. Yeah, um, well it's a great question. Basically I think the important thing is um, there are only a minority of students as you say that are involved or care about what the union does. I think it's a case of at the beginning of the year, and something I want to get elected, um, is when everyone comes in for freshers at the beginning of the year, is to make the union known, basically, to those coming in, but also to go to those lectures for students that are currently studying but may not know much about the union. And I think that's very important, and that's something I'd like to implement um, if, if you get elected, is to get out there first thing when students arrive, that you are there, this is the union, this is the people that can help you, and this is the way that you can get involved in your union. Okay, we'll get to Andrea at the front. Before you mentioned the general election, exactly yeah. how do you aim to get these students engaging in politics and even registering 
Yeah, um, I've already spoken to the Lancashire County Council leader, and basically, if uh, what I'm hoping to do is um, make a kind of document that will then be forwarded around to an uh, electorate that can then get it out to their students. Sorry, I'll do it um, That can then be taken around. In fact, that's a lot better. Um, that can then be taken around to their students. Um, and I was like, uh, yeah, engagement is a very difficult thing, particularly in any any election and with the national elections as it is. Um, but I think it's just trying to give that information out there to get people involved. A lot of people aren't engaged because they don't know information, because they don't know about what's going on. And I think that's where we, that's where generally that's what the problem is. Okay, um, and that's time for questions on Hayley. Um, we're going to go on to the two debate questions, I guess. Um, and reopen nominations wants to ask. Well, <laughs> <laughs> Reopen nomination box ask for what actually sets you apart and why shouldn't people vote wrong? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> what actually sets you two apart and why should people not vote for wrong? Okay. Well, re -nom reopen nominations. Firstly, I'd just like to state that um, if people aren't already running, then it's like how, how many times do you want to reopen the nominations, you know, until you know, that's basically my first thing. But what sets me apart from Ron um, is that... I think it's Ron Lee, not Ron. Ron Ron. <laughs> so from, from Ron and Lee, um, I've been involved for, my, for the last two years while being here. I, I've been elected, but even if I hadn't have been elected, I think I still would have been very involved. You know, I volunteered, um, as I said, through RAG, I volunteered through Green Ladder. I've, I've gone out and I've spoken to a lot of students and, well, I say a lot, but as many as I possibly can speak to that are interested. Um, I've worked on Freshers' team and I've managed to get that, I've managed to build that uh, relationship with quite a few students. And for me, I'm just, I'm very passionate about this union and I, I wouldn't be standing here if I didn't run two years ago. And you know what, I just absolutely loved every minute I've been here. And I don't think I can say much more apart from the fact that I will always work 100% because I always go that extra mile. And I spent, I say, I've spent more time working in this union than I have on my own degree. So I think that pretty much sums it up for me. <laughs> and Lee? Previously, um, like I've always already been elected uh, the campaigns officer. So if you'd have sent me down, if you'd send me gone out down, you know I'll get the job done. Uh, it sets me apart from Ron because I'm actually standing. Um, <laughs> and it sets me apart from Haley. Like Haley's mentioned, she's been involved. Um, within the union constantly and I, not only that but I've been involved in the union but also the university working alongside SANA who's running for Open Council um, to actually get get a better facility through the multi-faith centre uh, and we're doing this we've been involved in the union but at the same time it's student-led uh, and yesterday we had a bit of a win um, with working alongside the university um, in regards to things like this. So it's actually, as well as the union um, I've been involved in, I've also been involved in the university at the same time, and as well as outer sources, working with Lancashire County Council, the social services department, um, to make things adequate and more beneficial for the student body. Okay, and our next question, it's gonna to have to be quick answers, because uh, we're, we're a bit short on time. This is from Craig Stubbs, he is a mature student, he's asking, I'm a businessman, a the fundraising officer for LBS Society and the mature student. How can you help me integrate these roles within the university if you are elected? Um, as a mature student myself as well, um, there's different, there are different opportunities available um, to get out there. Um, as a business itself, it would have to generally go through the union's marketing department because um, it would have to be beneficial towards all students. Um, but to be represented as a mature student and actually getting out there, there are facilities at, that actually are available. As stated in my manifesto, I want to bring it back to students and actually support mature students. Um, so yeah, I've worked alongside um, mature students this year. Um, one of my manifesto points from last year was to actually get a mature student rep on council and we've done that this year, which is really, really exciting. It's a great step forward because it means we are getting more students involved from a wider and more diverse collective of students, which has always been one of my things. Um, and in terms, in terms of that, it's basically, yeah, basically what Lee said, there's opportunities to do that, but um, from an SU point of view, we are always very encouraging of anyone who wants to start new things, do campaigns, and we, so my, I would always support students, and I've always said that, and yeah. Okay, and that's, that's it for questions. Right, our presidents.
And can I ask the education candidates to come onto stage, please? Wherever you're hiding. Okay then, everyone. Um, so our education officers. <laughs> oh, right, we're going to start off. We're going to start off our manifesto delivery from da -da -da -da, Adrian Jaskikowski. Have, have I got that right? Yeah, we've got it. I done all right. <laughs> um, so for those of you who don't know me, I'm Adrian Jaskikowski. Uh, I'm running for education officer. Uh, for those of you who actually do read Pluto, uh, this is actually what I look like, and I'm not actually a twin of one of my fellow candidates. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm running for education officer. What qualifies me to be an education officer? Uh, within the last three years, I feel like I've been really involved in the whole entire university experience. I've been, in, I've been a course director for three years, reflecting student issues to face my course. I've been elected school president of my school, improving communication between the students' union, a staff, and students, trying to incorporate a better school for us and better opportunities for our students. I've also been heavily involved in a sports team and a society, been Secretary of Geography and Outdoor Society, enhancing experience and work experience for our members, and also been Secretary and Acting Chairman of the volleyball team. So heavily involved. And within the last couple of months, I've also been involved on the Students' Council. Uh, so if elected, what do I actually want to do? Uh, I really want to work on feedback and quality, and that's one thing that I'm really going to push. So finding an exact breakdown of where your tuition money actually goes to. So where does it go? We know it goes somewhere and it gets spent, but where does it actually go? And that's one of my main aims, what I want to do. Creating a union forum is one of my other aims. Looking at where, what other schools are actually doing. You know, what school presidents, what are they actually achieving in other schools? What course, course reps are actually achieving? seeing where we can work together to enhance better experiences in other schools and other courses. To create opportunities for our schools and the students as well. Looking at work experiences, uh, educational conferences, and enhancing the quality of our education that you're receiving. Uh, digitizing core texts in the library. One of my pet peeves is when you go to the library and you can't actually find a book that you're actually looking to read. And Obviously, by digitising Cortex, you'll be able to enhance your work experience. And that's time, I'm afraid. <laughs> that's your two minutes. So it's really short time. It is quite difficult to try and fit it in. Yeah, um, yeah it really is. Yeah, I'm getting, I'll ask you first question, you know, just to make sure you try and get really close. Yeah. Bobbing and weaving like a boxer then. Um, <laughs> so how do you intend to find the exact breakdown of where students' tuition fees are spent? Uh, I'm not going to lie, that's a really tough question and it's, it's a challenge I think is going to, if I get elected, it will be a challenge to find that out. But do you know what, I, to be perfectly honest with you, I don't know how I'm going to achieve it. But I, I assume I'm going to start with a Vice-Chancellor and for a Vice-Chancellor and hopefully go from there. But to be perfectly honest with you, I actually don't know how I'm going to achieve it. It's a challenge and I'm right, going to rise up to it. Okay. <laughs> And we'll open up questions to the floor then. So, anyone got any questions? Some of you must have. Come on. It's all right. Any fellow candidates want to ask questions based upon this manifesto? <laughs> no? No? Um, oh, go on. Go on. Go on at the front here. Go on. How are you going to um, let the university know about the quality of the course rec system and implement even more quality into the course rec system? How are you going to implement quality into the course rep system that we've already got and also prove to the university what a quality system it is? Uh, I'll start off with the course rep system. Uh, I think the course rep system is a good system that we have at the moment, but I think it could be heavily improved. And I think that will come down to the training aspect. So we'll, if I do get elected, I'll be working with key members uh, of the course rep team or the advice team 
to enhance the training aspect of the core strap system to maybe get more out of it. Maybe meet up with the core straps and score presence a lot more often and we'll get somewhere with that. To enhance the quality, like you said, uh, obviously I'll be doing the forum and uh, Union Forum for Educational Changes and whatnot. People are, uh, everyone will be able to read it. I'll be in, in contact with the Vice Chancellor and Pro Vice Chancellor to enhance experience like that. But obviously there are key, uh, key people in each school, uh, deans, associate deans, ex uh, experience leads, be working with them to obviously enhance experience for everyone. Okay. Um, this is one more from the floor. I can see our last one that, that was submitted earlier. Um, as education officer, what are you going to do to combat the attainment gap between BME students and white students? I think that's quite a tough question to answer. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm gonna I'm gonna refer to something that I already answered already, and because I'm not very prepared for a, an answer like that, and I'll be honest with you, um, if uh, whoever is submitting the question, or even if I, I get someone's details, uh, I'm pretty sure I can try and find out during the week, and I'll answer it later on. But uh, to be truthfully honest with you, this is what I'm standing. I don't know, but I'm more than happy to go and find out. Yeah, it's tricky one, that one. Um, so. Ladies and gentlemen, Adrian Jaskowski. And next up is Stevie Seymour. Which of us did decide to do this without a speech? Um, hi. <laughs> I'm going to start with saying I'm not actually related to Michael McIntyre either because. Um, <laughs> Um, basically, I'm standing here saying that I have been active, we've all been active in the union for the last three years. And I can honestly say that I have been a course rep, I've been a school rep when it was the school rep system, I've sat on council, I've been a trustee, I've done flying start, I've worked with admissions in my school, I've even sat on review panels for schools. I've done a lot and we can all say we have, and it's not about what I've done, it's what I want to do. In the next year, I intend to do seven main campaigns, if I get these in order, I expect that to be so much. Um, I wanted better feedback on our course, which Adrian has already picked up on, because at the end of the day, the system we had three years was in three weeks. We were supposed to get a good level of feedback and we were going to get it on time. We're not getting it. Why are we not getting it? It was a contract drawn up between the union and, and their the university and their students. We're not doing it. My second is personal tutors. I've had an amazing personal tutor, but not everybody has. They're there for both academic and personal support, and people aren't getting it. My third yes is the course rep system, and like the question that's already been asked, how do we emphasise course reps? Well, it is the same of going into schools. Who are your course reps? Who are your school presidents? Getting them together, getting regular meetings with them so students can see them. If you know who they are, you know who to go to. My fourth is about how um, health affects your education. A lot of different students have different health issues. There's mental health, there's physical health. And at the end of the day, for a tutor to turn around to their students and say, oh, I'm sorry, you can't have an extension because you've already used that excuse. It's not an excuse. It's something that you're dealing with. And at the end of the day, you should be supported fully through that with your union and your university. And I intend to make sure that happens. Um, another one is about hidden course costs. The other day, I was talking to a group of students. I had to pay to sit in an exam. I'm Why? afraid I'm going to have to cut you off. Oh. So you don't even get to complete your list. <laughs> I got five. Five. There you go. <laughs> I'll start off, not fair enough, Adrian. I'll ask the same question that we asked him at the end, which is, as education officer, what are you going to do to combat the attainment gap between BME students and white students? Um, okay, attainment is a big issue at Youth and it has been, and especially on my course because I do social work. And I went for a meeting in my first and second year about retaining students on the course. Okay, predominantly mine was mature students. When I went out and spoke to mature students, they weren't facing the same issues as the rest of the student body. So, and correct me if I'm wrong, I should imagine that the same could be said for BME students. They're going to have a different group of issues, and as such, they're going to be leading to similar issues. So what we should be doing as a union is going out and speaking to them and saying, well, what are your problems? What I want to do is implement an open door policy so that my door is always open, you're having an issue early on, come and see me, because it's better to dip it in the foot at the start and let it get so far that you leave your course. Okay, yeah, and um, one based on your manifesto. <laughs> <laughs> um, you, you highlight quite a few campaigns that we've just heard. 
which of these is the highest priority and why? I strongly feel that you can't prioritize campaigns, especially for me, because these are things that I want to do and I've spoken to students. I think when we're talking about which one ranks highly, it's the one that affects the most students. And I think that ranking them isn't fair because they're all things that issue that, that affect different students. BME isn't a massive proportion of youth money, it's not, but the fact that their retention rate is low is an issue. So actually ranking them, I don't agree with. I think all seven are really important and any more issues that you have, we have to combat because if we don't start on the small issues, they get the better. Okay, we'll open up to the floor. Um, Abby? Yeah, in regards to the feedback, um, I know on my course, like, it varies in quality and timing and everything. And we actually can't even read it. Um, what are you going to do about that in regards to it all? Fantastic question. I think feedback is so important, especially when you're doing other assignments and other pieces of work. How are you supposed to know what to improve if you've not had your feedback back? What I would say is each school will be different and it will be about sitting down with course rep and school presidents, looking at the school and looking at the standards of feedback. If lecturers can type it and you can read it, why are they not doing it? So these are the questions we need to ask. I'm not saying I know the complete answer because I don't know how every school operates. But what I am saying is I intend to go into each school and find out. Okay, we'll move on to TJ. Sorry, you're looking at me like I'm trying to ask this question. <laughs> but um, a lot of being school president of this this year, um, a lot of my students have said how useless their course reps are, um, and how you know they don't listen to their points of view. <coughs> what system are you gonna? Is there a system you'll put into place to to uh, sort this out? Because obviously, if the course reps aren't acting up to their role, how are you gonna sort of combat and get in the students' views across? Because obviously, they're not being put up across because the students feel that they're just doing it to put it on their CVs. Okay, I'd start by saying there is actually currently um, a system in place which um, course rep teams deal with. If they don't attend, I'm sure it's two SSLM meetings, then they have to come in and talk to you and see why they're not doing it okay for. But what I want to do is not create a new system, it's built upon the current one. That is one way of tracking your students. Fair enough, there might be health issues, there might be a reason they've not attended, but it could be fantastic course reps. But what I'm saying is I'd like a system of processes that where you go out and speak to the students and ask them, okay, how is your course rep? On a scale of 1 to 10, how they do? Do you know who they are? And I think if students don't know who they are, that's the main issue. So it's about going out, speaking to students and finding out and cue my input. <laughs> Rowdy. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't planned. Gareth's happy about that. <laughs> um, were you finished or? Yeah. Yeah? Well, that's <laughs> quite conveniently the end of the questions anyway. <laughs> so we we'll move on to Chris Steve. Yes, so, yeah, so when you start. Hi everyone, I'm Chris Stevens and I'm running for education in this year's elections. Uh, as a current school president and member of the Student Council, I know that I can provide a strong backbone for the Student Affairs Committee next year. There has been a severe lack of this within the SAC. During my tenure as Education Officer, the Students of Youth Plan, you, will be re-empowered to take control of how your university is run. I will do this by working closely with course reps and school presidents, along with volunteer teams to advertise and increase the attendance at the annual members meeting, which is hosted in 53 degrees and is open to all students across the university. This is an important event which gives students the power, the power to debate and vote on emotions and topics that will affect their student experience at youth time in the future. I will also work to improve the course rep system and ensure that every school in youth one has a school president and is fairly represented. A further change I would love to make is to get an expiry date added to the youth plan student card. I'll do this by working with the library and the I staff. My promise to you is transparency, empowerment, and true representation. I will be a proactive education officer who is out on the front line, seeing students face to face, and making immediate positive changes happen for the students of youth plan. Thank you for your time. Vote Chris Stevens, number one for education officer. Okay, and Chris, it's time for your questions. Um, we'll start off again with the same one that we gave to Adrian at the beginning, and that's as an education officer, what are you going to do to combat the attainment gap between BME students and Y students? Uh, I mean, as Stevie said, there's going to be, you know, 
every student's going to have a different reason for wanting to leave the university if they eventually do. Um, obviously, like I said in my speech, I will be out there talking to the students. Rather than it being an open door, I will be always be, as, as much as possible, I will be out of the office talking to the students directly, making sure that they can come to me and I can go to them. And I will try and, you know, I will work my best to point students in the direction of, you know, um, say they've got, a, they're working on a problem with, you know, they're, they're not quite, uh, they're suffering from some form of depression or they're just not able to kind of cope with the course because of, you know, that kind of thing. I'll point them in the right direction for those kind of things. Okay, and you say you want to further develop the course rep system. What do you intend to do specifically? I want to make sure that course reps know exactly what they're signing up for when they take on the course rep role. At the moment, in a lot of classes and a lot of people I've talked to, just see their tutor at the beginning of the year say, all right, who wants to be a course rep for the year? And somebody will put their hand up and the rest of the class will go, okay, we're all right with that. This should be something that's voted on properly. Okay, we'll take it to the, to the audience. Uh, I don't think there's actually an issue with the course. I don't personally think that there's that much of an issue between black minority students and the white students. However, I kind of noticed that all of you have failed to mention actually speaking to the black minority student rep. Isn't that something you need to look into? Because I can. Good point. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> um, I did want to answer. Did you want me to? Was there a question? I wasn't entirely sure. Sorry. All right. <laughs> Andrea, wait till after this. Okay. Yeah, we'll come back after that. Sorry about that. Didn't quite hear it. Um, what's the benefit of having expiry dates on the uh, implant cards? Well, for those students who don't necessarily have, you know, NUS cards, um, they would be able to, you know, for example, you've got cinemas and stuff like that that students will be able to go to, and they have, to, if they are to show their student union card, they would be able to show that expiry date. We'll go to Adrian. Um, you mentioned the expiry date on the UK card. Uh, LIS have actually said that it's going to take, it's going to cost way too much money right. for, to redesign the card and to put an expiry date on it. Where are you going to find this money to do that? Well, that should be something that we would be able to sort to with the library and the eye. You know, that funding should necessarily be, there shouldn't really be a need for much redesigning. It's only literally just point, putting an expiry date on that card. But there is a reason we don't have an expiry date on the card. No, Lee, I know this one. Okay. So, <laughs> the reason we don't have one is because that, if, um, NUS cards will become obsolete. And why do we buy NUS cards? We buy them because we get funding off NUS. NUS funds oh, the student okay. union, and that's the reason why the university can't have them date on it. If I'm wrong, please correct me. But as far as I've always been told, the reason we don't have dates on cards is because if we did, then the union wouldn't get funding off NUS. Lee, do you want to go back on that? First off, yep. First off, what's the point of NUS cards then? And second thing. What does, how does an NUS card benefit the student union in regards to um, having uh, an expiry date on a, car, on a student card? Right, okay. Um, the whole point, I mean, obviously, yeah, you get your discounts with the NUS card, uh, but some students may not necessarily, you know, be able to have the time, or they may not know about the NUS card. Uh, they may need, you know, just, it's having it there, that the fact that they can actually, you know, they can have that if they've not got their NUS card with them. Okay, we're going to knock the one on the head. We'll go back to Andrew's question. Andrew, do you want to do your question again for this answer? Yeah. Got to ask your question again. My question again. Um, I personally don't really think there's that much of an issue between black minority students and white students, but all of you have failed to mention that an issue that there's, there's actually a black minority rep to speak to. Is that something you'd do? Seeing someone submit the question for the system? Right, okay, yeah, I mean, um, yeah, there's definitely going to be a BMW, we'll set that to BMW rep, yeah. So it's definitely something that I'd be able to directly talk to, I mean, 
I'm part of the student council, so I sh should have kind of remembered about that anyway. Um, so that's someone I'd be able to directly talk to anyway, and I would go straight to you. So I'd agree with your points there. And do you want to quickly open that up to both candidates as a final question as well? Do you have any comeback on that? Yeah, I mean, obviously, if I was elected as an education officer, all I can promise is to support and represent every student. And obviously, I'll go out and talk to every student regarding whether there would be some sort of issue that they had during their university experience. So I can absolutely work on that, I guarantee The response I gave to the question was going out and speaking to BME students. Yes, I know it's a BME rep, and probably first point of contact, fantastic. But I think it's something you would do in partnership you'd go out together because at the end of the day, if I'm sat behind the desk and I just speak to one student about the collective issues, if I'm there with that student, out there talking to them, then isn't that a better SAC? And it's something that you should all be doing. More joint working between SAC, it's not a, I'm education officer, I'm this, it's we are a sabbatical team. So it's things that we should all be tackling as a group with, with council, utilising every council member. Okay, and you're gonna have to end it there. I'm sorry, Lee, no more questions for these guys. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, your education candidates. I forget the media candidates up next. Okay, so we're going to start off with Matthew Murphy. Well, these are our, our media officer candidates, by the way. Um, so we'll start off with Matthew Murphy. Hello. I just wanted to start with a quick question. Matt, Matt, Matt. Yeah. In quotes. I shall start off with a quick question for everyone. Can anyone tell me the latest main story on the Pluto website? But I thought, can anyone be able to tell me what the last show was on Frequency before this? <laughs> Can anyone tell me how many episodes of UCLan News and the Final Whistle have been made this year? Who's not been involved in student media? See? And uh, some people in student media wouldn't be able to answer that either. Right, I'll go back to the start. My name's Matthew Murphy. You may recognise me from the Harry Potter series. Or, as playing Steve the Pirate in Dodgeball. But yeah, I'm part of Team SOS and I planned this speech back in September. And I was hoping for Michael Bailey to fail horribly as media officer <laughs> so I could jokingly sing that I'd put back the pieces and build the Lego house of this media. Yes, you media. Damn you, Michael. <laughs> but I'm not here to joke around. I'm stood here because although I'm sure these two candidates would do a fantastic job in this position, I'm going to show you why I'm the right choice. I wanted this job ever since I met the first media officer three years ago. And I still want it now, even more so. I work for the BBC, the Daily Telegraph, Rock FM, Vice Magazine, I could go on. But, in fact, my classmates have told me to go and get a job because I have enough experience to. But I don't want a job in the industry, I want a job here. Now, I asked you those questions before to establish that there just isn't enough audience for student media at UCLan at the moment. And not enough people that know about us. My housemates hardly know about us, for God's sake, and I bang on about it all the bloody time. But that's one of my main aims, to give student media the cross-campus coverage it deserves. I plan to have all three platforms merged into one. And I plan to bring the first ever tablet and smartphone media app to the table to be designed by students here at the university so they can listen to frequency and read the latest Pluto articles and watch the latest PSD shows in one place, breaking down the segregation of the three. I plan to bring professional guidance from the LEP, Rock FM and PLTV that can give students the chance for some work experience or even a job when they leave. Okay, and that's time, I'm afraid. <laughs> And Matt, I'll, I'll actually open up the questions with, um, based on, towards the end you mentioned it, uh, an app for media, and it was something I had in my own manifesto last year, and I found cost prohibitive. How would you, how would you go about creating an app or keeping costs down? Well, I think I'll be working with a few students from the university themselves and possibly make it part of their course. And I know that people have tried to attempt this in the past, but they've found that it's been too costly to work that out. I think that it'd be worth looking at a way to freely doing that. And I'm sure students will be able to work that as part of their course and then take the cost out of it. Okay, we'll, take, we'll open up the floor now. So, hands straight up at the front. Straight up there. That's a good one. <laughs> Would you ever look as dapper as Bailey? 
Like, <laughs> Have you seen harsh. him in a suit? Remember, you turned good. my light off. <laughs> I, I did. I'm sorry. I guess it's this okay. has come back to bite me in the ass. <laughs> um, can we keep? Can we keep, try and keep questions on topic at least? <laughs> Yeah, you don't have to answer that, mate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, we'll, we'll go to Josie at the back Next. here. <laughs> Hi, so obviously I'm going to for APO, so my priorities are sports and societies. Um, I plan to raise a profile, so how would you work with APO to raise a profile in sports and societies? Well, I think that's been done very well this year by the current media officer, who is just as good looking as I am, just to mention. Uh, secondly, <laughs> and, uh, and I th but I think to build on that, I think that there needs to be some media within each society and each sport and to build upon that. I've been trying to work with Team UCLA at the moment, not just only part of my, as part of my, one of my assignments, but I'm trying to work with them to build a media profile for them. I want to work with them individually as societies and hope that that means more people know about them within Pluto and get them on PSC and get them on Frequency as well. Possibly open up a show for them on Frequency, possibly get their own program on PSC. Okay, we'll come to the front. Um, you know you're on about doing the app. Um, I know at my course we do web programming and stuff. Um, how would you make it equal between the students? Because if, if it's a quite part of the course, it could affect their grades really quite badly, if you understand what I mean. What, what do you mean by that in that what sense? Well, if you're going to make it part of the course to um, reduce the cost down, then how are you going to make it even between all the students and stuff and give them all equal opportunities to do it? Would you have to make like a group project, but then... Well, have, is one of your final projects to make something in, in, in terms of an app? Would that be one of your final projects? I have to make a, web, a full working website as part of mine. Okay. But like, there's like 10, 12 of us in the class. Yeah. So how would you do Well, that? I mean in the sense that we could, it could be one of, one of your final projects to make an app for student media. That, not making it equal in that sense, but that's what it is. Okay, is there any more questions from the floor? I can't see any. I've just been shown one on the tablet, which is what, what would you do better than Bailey apart from his arse? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get a gym membership and do some squats, first off. <laughs> and um, and I just, I've been working on my beard, but I'll get there eventually. <laughs> Okay, ladies and gentlemen, that's Matthew Murphy. Thank you. And we're going to move on next to Hannah Mason. Hi, you all right? I'm Hannah, and I'm running for media officer. First of all, media is about inspiration. So I picked the film because I'm a film student. You know, we do media, media officer, why not? First, let me tell you something you already know. University is no sunshine and rainbows. It's a very hard and difficult place. It doesn't matter how tough you are, it will beat you to your knees and keep you pinned in there if you let it. You, me, or nobody's gonna hit it as hard as you really like to get us. And it's not about how hard you hit, it is about how hard you take that hit, and how hard that we get up and just go on with it anyway. This is how success is done. Now, you know, if you're with this, then go out and get what you're worth, but you've gotta be willing to take a hit. And not point fingers saying that you're not where you wanna be because of him, because of her, or because of anybody else. Because you plan students, I know that it's not you. I know that you are better than that. I'm always going to look here no matter what. I'm second year, you know, this is our union, this is our life, and the union should be a massive part of all of our university lives. But until you start believing in the union, and myself as a media officer potentially, and the other candidates, it's not going to happen. Part of my manifesto is, I want you to be happy with your student media. I want you to believe in your student media and what it can do for you. I want you to know everything that it is. I want you to read the newspaper, I want you to go on the site, watch the programmes, listen to the radio, because not enough people do it. You know, I ask so many people, oh, have you read this week's Pluto? And they say, what's Pluto? No, that's not acceptable. Um, I want to help the societies. You need a bigger profile. You need promotion from, you know, not just media students, but other students as well. Marketing students, you know, bring more people into the paper to write different kind of articles so that, you know, everyone's course is worth just as much rather than just a journalism student or a film production student. To get everyone that we possibly can involved in student media. Together we can make student media better, but we can only do it as a team, and that's what I want to be. I want to be the builder of this team. Now you touched upon there, um, students who don't know what student media is. There's uh, 
and it's something that's it's, it's run throughout this university quite a while that students don't really understand or don't, don't see things out and about. How, how would you aim to change this specifically? You know, we need to go into people's courses and tell them about what is, what is on offer because not enough people know. I mean, you've got journalists and students who go a closet and can't write for the newspaper, but how, you know, we shouldn't be stopping a law student or a psychology student from writing an article about something that, you know, I don't know about it, but I, I'd like to learn about it, but maybe if they knew they could write or, you know, if they knew that they could make perhaps a show about it with PSTV involved, you know, more people get to know about it then, and then if we've got a bigger, a bigger audience, we get more attention. Okay, and I'll open questions up to the floor. We've got, I'll go to Alex first, and then I'll come to you. Um, you talked a lot about the actual problems that are with student media at the minute. You said well, how you'd like them to be. And you sort of briefly talked about going into courses. But that doesn't really say what you're actually physically going to do other than going to talk to people. Because the student apathy is what's affecting student media. It's not the volunteers that are there because they're working their asses off. They're here till 12 at night. Oh, no, ridiculously late, isn't it? I work next door, I see you all. Um, but what would you actually physically do to generate interest? Because that's the problem. The problem isn't that people aren't hearing about it, because they they are, they just don't care. Well, you need to get more involved because the more people that know about it, the more people that will care. You know, a lot of students don't know about it, so they've got nothing to care about. You know, if if I go out there and say, I need, I need more, as more, I know how good the volunteers are with Frequency, uh, PSTV and Kuzo. You know, Kuzo reads it and I can see that the quality is there in the products, but we need more. And so you've got to go on a recruitment mission to get as many volunteers to help out these volunteers, you know. It is unfair that they're here until midnight. You know, they should do it in shifts where other students get the opportunity as well and they get to rest and focus on other work rather than just a small select group. Okay, we'll come to the front, Jean. I want to ask you specifically about what you said about giving societies a stronger voice in Pluto. Uh, Vanessa has already done a fabulous job in making sure societies have a stronger voice in Pluto. She does a fantastic job at promoting and writing articles about events and um, making sure that the meetings are out there. So what could you do more like, uh, than what Vanessa's already doing, which is a fantastic job? Yeah, I work alongside Vanessa in the Opportunity Centre and I know that she's always busy working hard for the society and sports clubs. But um, maybe if we work alongside PSTV to get promotion, because when you go on the website to see what societies are there, it has a logo and it has a paragraph. You know, what if we had a promotional video, you know, show off how good your society really is. You know, the more people that see your society in different forms of media, the more interested it can be. Because, you know, if you put your society all over YouTube, so many people can access it easily. And then you think, well, that's a really good society, and then the more people that are going to join your society, the louder your society is going to be, the bigger it can be, and the more funds you can get, and the more like, attention that you can get across the university. Okay, we'll have a final question from Andrea. Um, what are you going to do to ensure that the university don't try and hide newspapers during open days or gagging? Because we got right to it, obviously, people didn't even know the university did that, but I'm not saying that anyone in the media hasn't work for media hasn't tried to stop it but it might happen again what are you going to do to prevent that? Yeah, I agree. Um, the first time I heard about that incident was a couple of weeks ago when I actually seen it on Matt's Facebook and um, obviously I was checking out the competition and then I seen how angry he was with it and I completely agree media should not be silenced but students even more you don't silence your students on open days people come here to look around and think want to make a decision and it's not the honest thing to do. On that day, I would have went round, found every single newspaper and put it back out. I would not have stopped in the rain, the wind, the snow. Students have a right to know about their student media. You do not take a newspaper away from us. Okay, and that's, that's it for questions. Everyone, Hannah Mason. And next up we have Adam Legg. Thanks everyone, you ready? It goes a little bit quick, so we had to prepare this earlier. Here's my prepared. Okay, cool. So this is a story all about how I'm offering myself for media right here, right now. So sit back and listen. I hope you're keen to hear what I've been doing for media to 2014. Okay, stop. Collaborate and listen. I'm the back running for a media position. Somebody asked, what's my main policy? Supporting volunteers, which is definitely my policy. Will I ever stop? 
I don't know. I've laid out my plans to help media grow. A new and improved Battle of the DJs, putting out podcasts for all those replays. Pluto, you're focusing online. Using social media a lot more this time. Brian Collins. Collins? Collins? Definitely Collins. Uh, because students get angry. Anything less than the best is a fallacy. Because you all love it, SM Sport in Source. Live broadcast by PSTV, of course. If you've got a problem, or if something is broken, whenever you need me, my door is always open. So this looks like the job for me. So everybody just vote for me. Because you need a little less controversy. It would just feel so empty without me. Vote Adam Legg for media. I'm glad that's over and done with, not gonna lie. <laughs> so, so hidden within that rap, there was some policies in there. There was policies this time, I'd just like to point that one out. Definitely. Um, and policies. one or two, I guess, I guess one I could pick on was, yeah, um, you mentioned a bigger and better battle of the DJs. Yeah. Why? Why? Um, I, I, I don't think I'm the only one that kind of felt like um, battle of the DJs didn't kind of... Microphone. Was, oh, sorry, microphone. Hello. Hello. Anyway. Um, I, I, didn't, I, I felt like Battle of the DJs didn't go as well as planned this year, and there's no point in playing the blame game, because I don't think we should look in the past. I think we should definitely look towards the future and what we can do as, as a union. I think the Battle of the DJs can be something fantastic. We have some fan, absolutely brilliant DJs in the uh, frequency roster, and I think that Battle of the DJs will only expand that more. So uh, it, it's just a matter of getting out there, getting out there to our students and actually uh, performing for them and showing that we are here, we are frequency, we are PSTV, and we are Pluto. We are here, care about us. And um, yes, let's open up to the floor. Woo, questions. Woo. Happy days. So about that. Questions on the floor. There's Sam's got questions. Sam at the back, who's from PSTV. Hey Sam. Hello. Um obviously Matt's talked about using some of the money to make an app which may be costly, but I'd like to know how all of you would be using your budget to improve student media. Like what would you be spending on? Can we just keep it just to Adam for now? Yeah. Adam, Sorry. what Hello. would you be spending on? I think more resources into promotion. Um, I think that, uh, that it's something that we don't do well enough as well, a union in general. Um, I think that we need to get the message out further and I think that we, I'll be uh, investing in more creative ways to get the, the, my voice out there, such as, you know, uh, DJing outside. I want, that's something I really want to do. I want to get DJ get people um, attention as we go past with DJ outside. I'm sorry, I was kind of tripped over on that one. But um, another thing that I kind of want to do is invest in putting TVs up around the place. It's a little bit ambitious, and I know that it may not happen, but I want uh, PSTV kind of constantly playing all over that. Um, and just advertising things that we're doing, like with the DJs. So I, that, that's what I'll be spending my budget on. I, I hope that's okay for you. You're kind of nodding, so it was, it was relatively okay. I apologise! <laughs> Can we come down to Lee here, please? Hi, Lee. Hi. Um, so you've done Battle of the DJs, yep. uh, what, uh, you've taken it into Source. Um, yep. I've worked many of them since in Source, and also been present for some of them. Yeah. It's, it's a kind of negative, but what are you going to do to stop people driving people away? Stop it. Like what? meeting the needs of students because say if you're doing it, if you're taking it out of like uh, uh, the radio station and taking it into uh, source, students have specific, I wouldn't say needs of music uh, taste, but if you're playing hard house and trying to something, um, how are you actually going to keep students involved and actually wanting to get involved in that level of DJs? Because from a negative side and from a staff, staff member side, it failed this year. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I, uh, I could actually see that. I hadn't actually thought of it from that point of view, and you're absolutely right. Um, in all honesty, I'll take your point away, and I'll definitely think about it, because I haven't actually got an answer for that at the moment. So um, I'm, thank you for raising that with me, and I'll definitely look into it. OK, we'll have one final question. I'm going to go to Danny at the back, um, which is now, to ask one you. Right, well, there seems to be a Hi, bit Danny. of like a gap between all three platforms at the minute. So what would you do to sort of unite them? Yeah, definitely. Um, I've got a uh, manifesto coming out. It's a big, long one. It's about a thousand words. So uh, thank you if you eventually do read it. It'll be released this weekend. Um, part of it is I want um, PSTV and Pluto News to be working more cohesively to create news packages rather than working against each other almost. Um, 
also on top of that, I want uh, Frequency to be doing radio packages as well because we've had um, we had news a little bit on Drive uh, at the beginning of the year, um, and I think that if we combine all three of them, we can definitely produce a radio news show that will be fantastic um, and will be of interest to students as well. Okay, and that's it for questions for Adam. So, ladies and gentlemen, Adam Lake. Look forward to a very short time, so we'll ask one, one question out there for debate amongst yourselves, I guess. And um, from your manifestos, your policies, there's not any big statements out there, there's no, no real statements of intent um, in terms of innovation. So what I want to know as an outgoing media officer is, how do you intend to innovate in the future going forward and take student media to the forefront of the current digital revolution? As well. well, that's 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 exactly what the app is for in that sense, in that no one's done that before, and you'll be able to listen to frequency, watch the latest PSTV shows, and listen, and sorry, and read the latest Pluto articles right there, all in one app. That's what my plan is, and it brings it all under one roof. And answers your question as well, Daniel. The fact that if it if it brings it all under one platform, people can see it all there. People only see Pluto sometimes, and they ask, oh well, what we ever radio station and a TV station as well. That's why it's all under one platform there. Okay. But the app is going to be, well, a previous video officer looked into this, and the app was going to be costing around 10 grand. Two and a half. Two and a half. <laughs> but at the same time, it's not. That's why. I don't intend to invest Used money, to that much money into it. That's why I looked into it. And the thing is, I found out that you can actually ask students to do that as their final project and that wasn't looked into enough before and that's why I want to take that that step further. Instead of having to invest money into it, we can use that and therefore we won't be spending any money on that. If not, if we can't, then we'll save it for other things. Um, I'd like to say that yeah, the app is a great idea, um, but I don't think that is something that in a year it could be done. I think that's more of like a three year plan or a two year plan because I think you need to big up each media platform first, get more involved, you know, make them more interactive in their own way and then gradually build them together to be one in an app. So I think what Matt is saying is good, but it's just not right now. Okay. Um, uh, yeah, um, we're going to have to vote in like some time wise. Um, so ladies and gentlemen, your media officer candidates. And that leaves us with one final group of candidates, that's the campaigns officers. If you would like to make your way up to stage, please. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, so Unfortunately, one of the candidates couldn't make it today, that's Mark. I will be reading his statement out of his manifesto out at the end. Um, but we are going to start with Lucy. Hi, my name is Lucy Hay. If elected, I will increase visibility, transparency and communication around campus. There are too many students that don't know what the SSE do, never mind knowing they exist. I intend to change this. I will go out and about around campus speaking to you to find out your issues and concerns around the university. Similarly, I will attend as many society events as I can to interact with students. I represent you. Therefore, I will make it my mission to change the attitude of the SAC in regard to their must approach us and not the other way around. To attempt this, the gap needs bridging between the university and the SU. It's time for the two to work together to get the best for you as students. I also would like to work alongside RAG on an event for a day each month to raise money for a charity that affects students plus run three main camp campaigns, mental health campaign called Headspace, working alongside the Film Festival Week, smear testing for cervical cancer, and the Marrow Project, which would raise awareness regarding leukemia. This has already been introduced by 44 universities around the UK. After seeing the Multifair Centre and speaking to members of the Islamic Society, it's apparent that it's not big enough and more room space is needed for praying. I would work alongside the FBO to make this happen. Finally, and most importantly, I will promote and support student-led -like campaigns by working with youth, societies and the other SAC officers. My experience over the past few years has allowed me to realise that there are always improvements that can be made. 
I've been a student master for three years, a flying start pal, a course rep, a member of the Freshers team, a Forensic and Investigative Sciences intern, a Green Ladder volunteer and a RAG volunteer. I believe this experience would make me an excellent campaigns officer, as I have the best of both worlds in the SU and the university. And it also demonstrates my enthusiasm to be involved and make a positive impact. I'm proactive, approachable and enjoy a challenge. I want to make a difference and not wait for somebody higher than myself to make it happen. I'm a doer, not a talker. You deserve an officer who campaigns for your rights, allow me to do so. Bang on time. <laughs> I'll just, I'll just go straight to the floor. Right. Hi Lucy. Um, my name's Sana. I'm the head sister of the Islamic Society and you mentioned about the multi-faith centre but I just wanted to say I've never actually spoken to you about it or I don't think anyone from the Islamic Society has mentioned that you came to them. Okay, um, I messaged you on the Facebook page to speak to you and just want you on the bake sale in Foster um, last Friday I think it was and I actually came along and I was told that you weren't there. Um, so I spoke to two other students um, who I just pretty much said, well, while I'm here, do you want to give me some feedback? Because it literally was only two members of the society, but it sounded as if they were speaking on behalf of, of you all. I went, actually went to have a look at the multi faith Centre and you can actually agree that it is far too small. And I know you do have that space on a Friday um, in the gym to go and pray. However, um, I don't think that's enough. And from what they were saying, and I mean, I've also spoken to um, another student, I don't know if she's part of the Islamic Society, but she's using the first aid room to pray. That is ridiculous. Like that is shocking. Um, so I want to obviously work with facilities management to try and give students more access to room bookings. Obviously, not making students a priority to have room bookings because we are here to be taught. So lectures should have that priority. But I do want to try and give you guys some more space to pray. Okay. Um. I just want to know, how are you going to make sure that liberation is at the heart of your own campaigning, especially during Shag Week? Um, well, I think I want to go out and speak to students more. As I said, society, I want to go to more society events, see how students feel um, about the events that we want on campus. I think Shag Week is a great, is a great week. Um, I've not been directly um, involved in it, but I have some students around um, and trying to get things going, um, trying to get some more students involved um, and getting more aware of what's going on. Um, but yeah, just talking to students and um, seeing what they want campaigning around, you know, see what they would like to see. Because as I said, I want to do more student-led campaigning. Um, I don't really want to be, I want to support and promote them. So I want you guys to have something for your CV. Um, so, you know, I led this campaign, I was out doing this, and I want to be there to support you guys. Well, yeah, I, no, I understand that. I'd want to come and speak to you guys and see what you wanted more. Um, I honestly don't have much to do that at the moment, um, just because I don't know many students um, at ILBBT. Um, but I would come and speak to you guys. As I said, I want to get involved. I want to get you guys involved. Um, and like I said, Shag Week's a great event, um, and it should be open for more students, not just, um, you know, heterosexual. So. OK, well, good to Alex. As uh, you probably just gathered from the last question, um, liberation is very important for campaigns officer. And again, as you probably, from Janine's reaction to your first answer, it's a very sensitive issue as well. Yeah. Um, how would you go about preparing yourself? As you've just admitted that sort of you're not very uh, adept in the different liberation groups. What steps would you physically take to actually prepare yourself? Because you, you might take my campaign, but if you don't know what you're talking about, then you'll probably do more harm than good. Yeah, I understand that, yeah. Um, well, I'm not saying that I know everything, that's obviously not, and I, I like to think of myself as quite an approachable individual, um, and I'm willing to learn and get to understand, um, and as I said, I want to go to society events, I want to talk to you guys and see what you want. I am open to obviously represent all students, and um, like I said, I want to come and speak to you guys, see what you want um, as a whole, really. Um, but yeah, I so said I'm approachable, I want to learn more, that's why I want to do this role as well, I want to learn more and um, you know, understand more about the university and the different communities that we do have in this university as well. Okay, we're going to have a final question probably. Uh, <laughs> I 
Absolutely. Hi. Um, so, as the previous campaigns officer who went imp implemented the big board, um, you talked about uh, student leadership and student campaigns. How are you going to ensure projects like this actually follow through? Through my year in office as campaigns officer, um, the pro vice chancellor constantly ignored and ignored uh, the needs of students. How are you actually going to better that and make sure something happens? Okay, um, well actually I did, um, I know Jerry very well, I did a VIP campus tour for him and um, it does sound as if he'd give me the time of day, um, if that means anything. Um, I know how hard it is to get students involved and um, all I want to do is build on what stuff has been done. Um, there has been some great stuff in the university, um, just at the SU I mean sorry, and I think it's important to build on that and get more students involved. Um, in terms of the campaigns and university, um, I do think sometimes, yeah, you're right, it is just looked over and people don't seem to care, especially those higher up than you Delta building where all the important people live. Um, but personally, I don't like to say no as an answer and I'll keep trying. No is not an option for me. I want an alternative if I'm told no. Um, so I'll fight to get things done. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, we say hey. We'll move on to Bronwyn next. Yeah, just speak in when the time will start. Yeah. Okay, um, as you know, I'm running along with four other candidates uh, as part of Team SOS because we think it's time to support our students. Um, what can you expect from me as if I am elected your new campaigns officer? One thing you can be com have a confident belief in is that I would be there to listen to you, the students. For those of you that know me, you know that I'm very proactive within the student union, especially with my involvement on the student council, freshers team. Um, this year, I've been on academic boards, so I've seen it from the university side as well, um, over the past two years. And those who don't know me, um, you can trust that I'm a friendly, outspoken, and confident, confident person who will always have the welfare of students at heart. In my manifesto, I've not been specific in what campaigns that we want to run next year if elected. Um, this is due to the fact that I believe the issues and concerns are more likely to change. Uh, the students have, may have a different view in a few months, therefore I think the best way in which to ensure they are up to date and dealing with the concerns that are relevant at the time to create effective student-led campaigns. However, I will promise to review uh, previous campaigns done by previous officers and even students uh, and evaluate how we can build or add to them and see how they can develop um, into wonderful means of benefiting the student body, especially those surrounding sexual health, green projects, mental health, etc. Um, throughout my academic career, I've always, it's always been appropriate for me to see both points of view. This is a skill I've transferred into my political stance within the issue. I find it's the most effective way of finding a balance and fairly representing the different minority, minorities and groups within the student population. Um, I've been involved in many campaigns, it's all in my manifesto, as in Big Vote, Hate Crime. I've been a part of the Shag team, so I've seen firsthand um, how, this, how positive ways of campaigning can affect the students and benefit them. Um, if you want a fair, consistent, and proactive representation, so Graham Casey is another one to help me as well. So thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Once again, I'll just go straight to the floor with the questions. Um, obviously, we've had like the strikes and such issues and stuff, and campaign would like be um, an activist. How would you be willing to actively go to the university to campaign for students against strike action? Well, this year I sat on an academic board. So um, I heard kind of the bits and pieces um, from all the, I was going to say big leagues, um, jury, vice chancellor, everything. Um, I think we needed to be out there for the strikes. We needed to talk to students, find out, find out what happened. We tried, we have tried with council, and with, um, basically there should have been more proactive approach, actively. I would actively go and speak to students. I would make sure that there was transparency. They would know. Um, there would be no confusion from the UCU, there would be no confusion from the university, SU. It would be quite transparent and I just I'll get out there. Okay. Back. Um, 
what are you going to do um, to support the rise in the um, students with mental health and how are you going to do that sensitively? Well, um, um, I think we need to uh, focus on our services. What are we actually offering to um, students? There was a campaign run this year. It was a mental health campaign. Um, no, support. it's actually supporting our students. Uh, stressed out students <laughs> um, and I think that there's so many effective ways where we can help students with mental health issues and a lot of a lot of their issues are being brushed over especially by the university and that's not on um, <laughs> right <laughs> look at that <Aunt> Alex. <laughs> Did I answer your question or do you want me to? Um, I've, I have um, a few, uh, some experiences with people with mental health issues. Um, I think I need to learn more about it. I need to find out even if, the other, if people are willing who have those issues to speak to me and tell me how they think is the best way to do it because obviously I, I personally don't know. So I think I need to find out how I can approach it sensitively and um, just um, get as much feedback and help and advice from whoever I can to make sure it's done properly, effectively. Okay. Um, sorry Alex, we can't come to you because we're, we're out of time. Any questions, uh, the ladies and gentlemen, that's from with Katie. Okay, as I said at the beginning, one candidate could not attend today. That's Mark Wally, he's given, give, given his apologies. So I'm going to read out a little bit he sent in. Hi, my name is Mark Wally. I am a community leadership student and I'm running for campaigns officer here at UFAM. To tell you a bit about myself, I was born in Germany, but I was brought up here in Preston, and I've lived here my whole life. So you could say I'm a proper Prestonian. Before I started here at UFAM, I had a number of jobs, such as being a stock checker for OCS Group Limited and being a bartender at Park Hall Hotel. I've worked in various other jobs, and through these jobs, I've developed skills that are well suited to working as a campaigns officer. Skills such as leadership, interpersonal, and creativity. I, decide, I decided to study community leadership here at UFLAN because community spirit is something I feel strongly about, and it is for this reason that I'm running for campaigns officer. I've been involved in many campaigns over the year, and I believe that the more people that campaign for what are right, more positive changes will be made. The more positive changes will be made, the happier the students. The happier the students, the more the university thrive. And that has got to be a good thing. When I'm not studying at university, I'm usually out working in the community, and you will always find me either feeding the homeless, teaching mental health at Preston and Runshaw Colleges, or dressed as a banana at the Preston City Centre trying to get people to buy fair trade products. I do these not because it is fun and very rewarding, but because I get to see just how much good campaigns change people's lives. Through this, I have learned how a lot of campaigns are run and about different campaign strategies, which I will bring to the role. Before I started university, I was homeless, living on the streets of Preston and Manchester. Through university, I managed to get myself off the streets and into education. And now, and now my wish is to give something back to a university that helped me. People that I have worked with often describe me as, a cre as creative, a good listener, hardworking, motivated, committed, fun and caring. So if you vote for Mark Waller for campaigns officer, I promise that I will ensure that the needs of students are met, give students a voice and bring about positive change to the university. Thank you. So that's Mark Waller. So I'll ask both candidates here one final question um, to debate amongst yourselves if you wish, and that's one that was submitted earlier, it's, I have a physical disability, how will you engage physical and mental disability students in your campaigns? Um, I, I, I don't know, anyway. I don't see how um, those students would differ from students who are able. Um, obviously, I would welcome anybody who wants to get on board with campaigning. Um, like I said, I want to lead a student my campaign, so I'm I would be going to represent the whole student body as far as I can. Um, but yeah, I want everyone to be involved as much as possible. That's 
think that's our ultimate goal is, is really as well is to get every student involved on our campaign as well as much as we can. Yeah. I have a physical disability. How will you engage physical and mental disability students in your campaign? Yeah, kind of along the same lines of uh, the um, we're doing a campaign for any campaign. We have to think about all the students are, all the students. Um, it, it depends, even depending on what um, campaign it is. I don't understand, I don't understand why there would be an obstacle for that. Um, yeah, pretty much, yeah. Okay, well, um... Hey, Luke. What? Can I have one more question? No, oh, go on then. <laughs> the current campaign officer, Sophie Bennett, would like a question. Okay, um, as campaign officer this year, I introduced an accommodation campaign called the Love It or Hate It, Rate It campaign, um, which included an accommodation survey, which got over 500 um, filled in applications, and um, an accommodation fair. As campaigns officers, potential campaigns officers next year, how are you going to take this forward? I think I would try and get more people to fill in the survey, personally. I think a good way of doing that is to go around the accommodation. I do understand that as a campaigns officer there is a lot of time that's taken up with um, other stuff that has to be done. Um, but I think, you know, all these electronic surveys are the best way to do things. I'm very old fashioned now, I love papers and I've got my iPad right in front of me, I've got everything up there. But I do love doing things, um, paper service. So I think it'd be great to get some volunteers together and go out around the accommodation because there's about 4,000 students that live in accommodation just on campus. So I think 500 can be boosted up. Um, and I think the best way to do that is to go around the accommodation and get those students that are living there right, right then and there um, to fill it in. Just to let you know, we did do paper version and we did go out to accommodation. <laughs> but just oh. to let you know. Did you go to all the accommodation? Yes. yes. What, when did you go? When, when did you actually go and do it? It was in November. Um, what day, what time? <laughs> <laughs> no, honestly, Sunday night's the best thing to do. <laughs> Right, okay. Okay, okay, yeah, guys, we, yeah. we're going away. Um, <laughs> go on, Wynn. <laughs> I, um, I think that, that 500 is an amazing number for that, and especially at that time. I can remember it, there was three different surveys. There was, I know there was two from the issue at the same time, and I'm a geek, I love all my surveys. Um, <laughs> I love giving my opinion. Um, and answering all the questions. So I done them, but there was a lot of students that didn't do them, maybe for that reason, because there were so many out. Um, I think we need to branch out. Um, I think there need to be a bit more presence, but the the, the purpose of the Love It, Hate It, Rate It was amazing because I've had a lot, of, a lot of students have issues with their accommodation. And I think we just need to build on that. And yeah, that's, that's I'm a point in the speech today. I just wanted to take the, campaigns previously done and build on them to try and find weird and wonderful ways of doing it. So. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, your campaigns officer candidates. <laughs> and that represents the very end of question time. It's been, it's been quite a long one tonight and I apologise for that. Um, can I just say thank you to all the candidates that have been up here today. It's Quite a nerve-wracking thing to go up here and talk, talk in front of people. Um, I want to remind you all to make sure you register on the SU website at uclinesu.co.uk forward slash elections to make sure you use your votes. Voting will open at 9 a.m. on Monday, 31st of March and run to Thursday, 5 p.m. And results night will be here at 7 p.m. I'd also like to remind you that next week, next Wednesday, it is the Golden Roses in 50 degrees. So if you're voting the Golden Roses, and you've got a lecture up there nominated, make sure you get down there and support them at the Golden Rose at 53 degrees next week. And that's it, yeah, thank you. Can we, can we just say thank you to the signers as well, doing a great job. Thank you to Michael for doing a brilliant job. And thank you to all the uh, PSTV volunteers, although I can't...